Somebody asked me recently how to tile an image inside Blender. So today I'm going to talk about how I would go about doing this. I'm going to start out by creating the image texture, then I'll go through the different ideas that I came up with on, you know, different effects you can achieve. And by the way, if you like what I do, you can support me on Patreon or Gumroad, and I'll put those links in my description. The first step is going to be selecting an image to tile, and I'm going to revisit an old tutorial. This is tutorial 28, where I created a bunch of abstract procedural images there. I'm just going to grab this one here and uh, basically just, I guess I'll create another camera. So let's do that. And I'll just use this camera to focus in on this object here. Then I'm going to change the camera dimensions to something square. So I'm just going to go 1080 by 1080. I'm going to zoom in just so it reaches the borders there. I'm going to scroll down and uh, you can leave it on PNG if you want. I'm going to change it to JPEG and go to color management. And I'm going to change it from filmic to standard because that's going to give me a better color there because I want this to be actually white. And if I do filmic, it'll be gray. So then I'm just going to render this out and save that file. Here I'm in a new Blender file. I'm going to delete this cube and put a plane uh, in place of it. I'm going to change the top right to the 3D viewport and change the whole middle area to the shader editor. And let's put that material that was on our cube onto our plane. I'm going to hand to get rid of that shelf on the right and uh, just make this screen a little bit larger in the top right. Zoom in and hold down Z and move your mouse up to go into rendered mode. I'm going to drag and drop this image that I created into our shader editor. And if I hit Control Shift left click. It's a Node Wrangler shortcut and it'll just bring up the preview. If that doesn't work then you just need to enable Node Wrangler by going to Edit, Preferences, going to Add-ons, and then clicking in uh, this search box here and typing in Node. Just make sure there's a checkbox beside Node Wrangler here. While this image texture is highlighted, I'm going to hit Control T. That's another Node Wrangler shortcut. Just brings up this texture coordinate and mapping node. I'm going to change the texture coordinate output from UV to Object. So probably the easiest way to tile this would just be to increase the scale on the mapping node. That's one way to do it for sure. Um, but uh, let's try something else here with a Voronoi texture. I'm just going to place it right here between the mapping and the tile. I'm going to connect position to the vector there. And then if we bring in a vector math node and place it right here and change it to subtract and did that quickly by opening it up and hitting S. I'm just going to move this out of the way here. Uh, we can connect this mapping node to that second one right there. And then I'm going to change the scale on the Voronoi to 1 and the randomness to 0. This is just another way to tile things. And uh, you might notice too, there's this little line right here. I found that uh, if you go to your image texture and change this from linear to smart, it gets rid of that little line there. So the reason I plugged in this Voronoi texture is now I have access to other parameters like randomness here. And if I want, I can change this to something like maybe smooth F1. And then I have smooth and randomness. So maybe I'll go 0.1 for smooth and then randomness. I can kind of bring up a little bit at a time and create these interesting patterns there. If I want a larger scale, I think it's best to change it right here. Maybe go to 2 or 4 or something like that. You can also go into edit mode and just size this up. And you get an unlimited amount of those uh, images there. I could also add in a noise texture right before the Voronoi and uh, create a little bit more distortion here. I'm going to add in a mix RGB right after here so we can control the amount of influence that this noise texture has by plugging the noise into color 1 and then this mapping node into color 2. And this slider here is going to control how much influence it has. If it's uh, near the top, it's going to have much less influence and at the bottom it's total influence. We could also change this scale right here to increase or decrease the frequency of the noise texture. This actually puts it a little bit off center as well. So what I like to do is actually set up a couple nodes here, just a value node and a math node. Open this up and hit S to set it to subtract. And I'm going to go 1 minus whatever value we have here, which I'm going to plug in here. So let's say we want like 0.9. We can just put that up here. And I'm going to create a second mix RGB, place it here. And I'm going to set this to subtract. And this is going to go into the factor right here. Then I'm going to plug this value into this factor right here as well. Now if I move this back and forth, it stays more or less center. And that seems to be a pretty easy fix for that. So I'm going to set this at 0.95 so it has very little influence there. Now the noise is affecting it a little bit. Another thing that's kind of uh, interesting to do, just add a color ramp here at the end. 
then we can uh, control the colors of this image here, maybe something like HSV and FAR. And I'm going to set this bottom slider here. I've got a hex code. I'm going to enter in there. Let's do 7F0009. So it's kind of a red color there. And we basically go through every single color until we get to white, which is the top slider. Then we can plug that into our principal BSDF and look at that. Another thing we could try is just adding in a bump map, just placing it right here and running the color into the height. See what that's doing there. And it creates a little bump map. We could also control it if we wanted with a color ramp, but uh, it's not really going to do too much because um, it's mostly just black and white anyways there, but it's an option anyways. I'm going to bring that off and plug this into the normal. Let's look at that. If we look up close, we can see some artifacts here along the edge, and we can probably fix those with a color ramp. So let's try bringing that in. I'm just going to place it before that bump map and drag the white down. And it seems to fix some of those there. These ones inside, uh, if I drag this black up, they can be fixed as well. Something else we could consider doing is just dragging this position right into the vector input on that tile node, the image texture there. And if we crank up the scale to something like 20, we can see it's got this kind of pixelation effect. And I'm going to turn this noise texture off just by putting this at 1 here for now. And if we want, we can change the smoothness. It kind of gets rid of those lines in the middle there. And the randomness just straightens it right up. And we can crank the scale up, and we can slowly see our texture kind of appearing there. If we go all the way up to something like 180, it's pretty much the original texture, just kind of pixelated. So it's just an interesting effect anyways to play around with. Maybe set this at like 50, and then move the smooth back and forth, and the randomness, bring it up a little bit. Looks pretty interesting. One last quick idea for if you didn't want these to appear in every spot, you kind of wanted to randomize uh, which position they're in, we could take this Voronoi here and go the color output and just place a color ramp right after here. And then I'm going to change this to constant. And we have this slider here that basically creates these um, you know, random areas of black and white. And for this actually too, I'm going to make sure that these are both set to zero so we've got straight lines. I'm going to move all this over a little bit as well and just bring in a mix RGB and I'll place it right here and just run this into the factor. Then I'm going to run the vector subtract into color one and set this to white for color two. Then I'm going to run this into the tile input right here and let's look at what this is doing so far. So we can see it's kind of working. If we drag this back and forth, it is kind of creating random white spots, but not quite where we want them. And if we move this location right here, it moves everything. So uh, one thing we could do, you know, this might not be the best way to do it, but it is a way to do it. I'm going to take a vector math node and place it right before that Voronoi texture, leave it on add, and set these all to 0.5. Now if I move this back and forth, we have it randomly uh, remove or add these shapes here. I should note too that with these settings, if you increase smoothness or randomness, it doesn't quite work the same. You know, you get these lines or these little artifacts. So in order for this to work a little bit better, these should probably both be at zero. You could also change this to 4D and have this W right here. And this is going to allow you to cycle through different iterations. Let's wait for it to load in for a sec there. If we go through different iterations here, we can see that um, you know these will be in different spots. So this color ramp here and this W value allow you to get different um, iterations of that image all over your, your mesh there. We could also try combining a couple of these ideas. I find a lot of the interesting ideas I come up with are just by combining simple elements. So let's try something here, for instance, uh, just get rid of this subtract altogether. Then I'm going to bump up this scale to something like 20. And uh, we can see these little dots here. If I drag this across now, it slowly fills in that pattern. So if we drag it all the way to the right, and we can see it's kind of creating our pattern for us. So we can drag it left and right. Um, you know, another kind of interesting variation on this idea. If we go back to 20, maybe change the smoothness to 2. Now we've got those little lines in between there as well. Like I said, just trying to combine those simple ideas often creates something pretty cool. You know, maybe lower this to 10 and do the same thing. Change this randomness. So that's it for today. 
Let me know if you have any questions or suggestions. And thanks a lot for watching.